All right, today I wanted to pack both of those projects I did the past two days into one GUI. So both of those console apps would be the same functionality in one GUI. So you'd have a button that could go to a web page and find out how many projects there are from my portfolio. And then another button that could actually download all the images from the portfolio. So let's get started. And open up a new project. It's going to be a WPF app. Let's name it uh, Portfolio uh, Tool. First off, let's uh, change the window name to, let's say, Portfolio Tool. Let's make this smaller, maybe um, 250 by 300. Let's put a text block in here, a text box, a button, another couple of text blocks, uh, another button, and I think that'll be it for now. Let's um, align all these to center. I personally find that easier to work with. just makes more sense in my head if everything is centered. Easier to work with the positive and negative than it is to work with just one. Okay, let's um, align them all to zero to begin with. Let's do a spacing of uh, 25 maybe on each. So we'll go 25, 50, 75. These are both gonna be on 100 because one is going to be an actual block of text that is there to begin with and the other is gonna be generated at runtime. And this one will be 125. Let's start at the top. This text block, let's name it portfolio address block. And the text is going to be portfolio address. This one, let's name it portfolio address text box. This is gonna be where we're gonna input the web address for the portfolio. Let's give it some starting off text. Let's just do enter portfolio text address. We're gonna make these wider. Let's make all these 250. Let's name this button get number, number of projects button. This text block is going to be number of projects text. This one can be number of projects. This one is going to say the exact same thing pretty much. It's going to be number of projects. Let's put a space and a colon in there. For the time being, this value can just be zeroed out. So let's just put seven zeros in there. Now let's move this one over so it's even with the other one. Let's go negative 140, that should work. And let's move this one over just a little bit. Let's try 20, and then this button is gonna be the download images button. And we can make it say the same thing. Copy and paste is your friend. Now we're gonna need Selenium for this, of course, so we can go ahead and go get that. Let's get the web driver. Let's get the Chrome driver. Let's go to our actual main window class. Of course, we're going to need threading. We're not going to need any of these controls. 
We will need link queue. We're not going to need text. We're not going to need system either. We will, of course, need selenium. So let's get the system real quick. We're going to need net to do downloads. Let's put selenium down here at the bottom. Open QA. Dot selenium. And then dot selenium dot chrome. We don't really need to do anything with the actual main window component. It's fine how it is. We need to do something with our buttons. And Visual Studio is wonderful. So let's go back to the design window. And we can just double click on the get number of projects button. And it will create us a new method for when we click on that button. And here, we're going to do basically the same thing we did yesterday, but slightly different. So let's start off thinking about our logic here. Someone's going to click on the button. The program is going to read the web address they put into the text box. It's going to go to that address and then perform everything just like we did before. So perhaps we should put in some error handling here and in the form of an if statement. So let's start off with a if. If the portfolio address text box text value is equal to what we already had in there, which is the enter portfolio address, then we want to give an error message saying, hey, you didn't put in a web address. So let's just do messages, message box dot show, and we'll just give it a simple error message. Uh, error invalid input URL. Let's do an else. So now we can do everything just like I did before. So let's type it out again. Var driver, make a new, a new driver, obviously. We want to do a new Chrome driver. Then we're going to do driver dot navigate. Go to URL and then portfolio address text box dot text. If someone inputs this correctly, it should work just fine. Let's do a thread sleep. Do a thousand milliseconds. Let's define projects. Driver dot find elements. by class name and then it's going to be album grid item. Of course this will be different for whatever your particular use case is but for what I'm doing we know that's the proper item because of the previous videos. Now we need to get our value here for the number of project. Let's start off by zeroing out this value or making it null so it appears as nothing. We can create here, number of projects dot text equals projects dot count dot to string. And then if we do that, we're going to want to close the driver instead of leaving it open. And now if we start this, it should work. So let's start it and see what happens. All right, here's our little window. Let's enter a portfolio address. I will grab my portfolio address, copy and paste that in here. And then let's get number of projects. It's gonna open up the window, navigate to the page, count the number of projects and close. And here it's gonna show us 105, which we know is the correct number. Let's go back to the design window. Let's go download project images, double click to create a class. And here we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing we're going to start out with an if statement just in case someone for, forgets to put in a web address. And we can just simply copy and paste this whole if statement actually. Nice and simple. Of course the else is going to be different. But we are still going to do this, the thread sleep, um, the album grid item. We can copy this because this functionality is identical. But now we need our for loop. And the length of course is the projects count. So we need to redefine projects, the same way we did before. So we're not getting a stale element.
copy and paste. And that will give us the same list. Now let's do projects, I. And we're gonna click it, same way we did before. Let's create a variable named images. Driver dot find elements. By tag name. We know the tag is IMG. We need another for loop. This time, let's change our value here to X because we can't have the same value, obviously. And we need to do images as our length. And then let's just do the same thing we did before, which is var. Uh, images, image URL equals images x get attribute, and we're getting the source attribute or src. Let's create another variable image name. Even though we're no longer dumping these to the console, it's still useful to have the name so we can push it to the file image dot get attribute looking for the alt now we need a web client let's just name it downloader again I need the new web client downloader dot download file and then let's give it the image URL and then a file path. And I'm going to use the same file path I had before, which is the S drive image downloads location. So then we just need to put in the image name and an extension. In this case, I know they're, they're JPEGs. And then let's go down and do a thread sleep. Let's do 250 milliseconds. And then driver dot navigate. Back. Then outside of our loop, we're going to do a driver dot quit. So when it finishes downloading, it will close that window. That should be everything if we press start. Let's go ahead and not put in the web address yet so we can see our error box working. Let's do get number of projects. You see here, error invalid input URL. Same thing happens if we do download project images. Same problem. So let's input our web address. Let's do download project images. It's gonna launch the page, go to the website, and begin downloading images. As we can see here. I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this or around game design or just life of a developer. I'll be uploading daily for at least the next uh, 97 days. Thanks. See you tomorrow.